Now, Petty's bought a $2.3 million house in Las Vegas around 2000. He owned a fleet of cars. He had a $340,000 Bentley. And the five foot five kingpin from South Memphis employed a staff that included a maid, a nanny, a cook, a personal trainer, a driver, and of course, armed security detail team. It didn't take too long once he was at the top for Petty's to get on the federal radar but it was in an unexpected way, which to me sounds sort of like one of those fake stories the police give when they want to protect an inside informant. Story goes, uh, Petty's and his girlfriend get into it. She calls the police for a domestic violence charge. They show up, they smell marijuana, they see a joint burning in the ashtray. This is in 2001. They see a joint in the ashtray, so they give them probable cause to look around the house Bingo, 600 pounds in a closet. Given what Petty's was doing with uh, cocaine, you could say it was just marijuana, but 600 pounds gets you some time in prison. So Petty starts to get spooked. Then in June of 2012, the feds hit the home of a guy named Tino Harris around Memphis. And he was one of um, Petty's main underlings and he had 32 kilos stashed in his house. At this point, He's feeling his doom closing in, and Petty's decides to get out of Dodge. He leaves the U.S. for Mexico, where he linked up with LaBarbie, and he would spend the next five years there. Now, Pet So, of course, Petty's operation got even bigger. He's down in Mexico. He's right next to his plug. He's directing traffic all across uh, Southeast United States via cell phone. But in 02, an indictment comes down, a big RICO case against Petty's and his operation. And a joint task force is set up. A deputy U.S. Marshal and Memphis police detective named Thurman Richardson um, managed to infiltrate Petty's organization and buy cocaine undercover by wearing a gold grill and dreadlocks in 05. He makes a lot of buys from Petty's associates and the police claim they intercepted um, uh, cell phone calls from Petty's and others discussing plans to assassinate the federal prosecutor in the case as well as Officer Thurman Richardson, the guy who went undercover. And Richardson took it seriously enough that he took the precaution of forbidding his school-aged children from uh, playing in the yard or walking to school alone. Again, in a lot of cases, there's these accusations that these guys threaten the prosecutor's life. No one, prosecutors almost never get killed, I don't know. But Petty's wasn't just all bark and no bite in other uh, ways. He did have a hitman gunned down um, another of his childhood friends after the victim decided to leave the organization and testify for the government. Antonio Allen, who was either his cousin or his friend, and I've read conflicting uh, reports of whether he, he was an informant, he wasn't, who knows. Federal prosecutors keep getting more indictments in overlapping cases. They get the George Hill guy in Columbus, they indict two of Petty's hitmen, and all these guys are going into custody and they're given more and more information um, about Petty's who still hold up down in Mexico with LaBarbie. Now faced with life sentences, um, a lot of Petty's inner circle agreed to plea deals, which meant they had to spill the secrets and uh, the net is tightening on Craig Petty's as he sits in Mexico with LaBarbie. And LaBarbie himself at the time has become the head of something called Los Negros, the black ones, which was the enforcement wing of, or well, the paramilitary wing of um, the Beltran Leva cartel. And he's engaged in a war with Los Zetas. Now, Craig Petty's makes the U.S. Marshals top 15 most wanted list in 2004. The Marshall's list described him as five foot nine and 140 pounds in red caution, armed and dangerous. Petty's was wanted on a 45 count indictment which included cocaine distribution, money laundering, and multiple homicides. Judgment day was nearing and Petty's could feel it. He tossed out his cell phones because he figured they were being intercepted. Petty's knew the raid was coming and in January 2008 he was trying to bribe some Mexican police who normally had been tipping him off if there was anyone snooping around about him but at this point they didn't want to take his money 
He was too hot, it was time for him to go. Petty's was taken into custody in a raid in an upscale suburb about 130 miles northwest of Mexico City in January 08 as snipers crept atop neighbors' rooftops and a helicopter hovered above. Accustomed to bribing his way out of trouble, Petty spoke in broken Spanish to his captors, but like I said, his time was up. He tried to offer cash, but too much pressure from America and the Mexican law enforcement took him in and they quickly deported him. They take Petty's into custody down in Mexico in 08. And, and Petty's had five kids and his uh, common law wife or wife, Latasha Booker with him. And two of his kids, twins, had been born in Mexico. And so it was what was gonna go on with his kids. So the US task force told Petty's if he talked, they would help him with the kids. Now what Petty's revealed about his years in crime is uh, hidden in protected court records. A team of federal investigators and prosecutors flew to Houston once uh, Petty's crossed the border to see the elusive adversary they'd spent so long trying to get out of Mexico. According to the feds, which might be true or might not, uh, once he was in custody, Craig Petty's crumbled. He sobbed, sniffled, and dabbed at tears with napkins. Uh, supposedly, they asked him if he knew he couldn't run forever. Petty said, I knew. But in the end, Petty's didn't give enough information to get himself out of trouble. Maybe he did like a lot of guys does. He sort of tried to talk, and then he had second thoughts, and he gave him old information. At one point, I was trying to look his name up in Bureau of Prisons. It wasn't appearing, but now it does. Um, as the story goes now, the feds offered to change his name in prison and hide his family in the Federal Witness Protection Program, but he was quoted as saying, wherever I'm at, they'll find me and kill me. Though that didn't stop uh, the Flores brothers, whose, whose wives are currently hawking their book and doing all sorts of TV appearances. Now, he did have reason to be scared. I mean, La Barbie had been the head, like I said, of Los Negros, the paramilitary wing of the Beltran Levi cartel, and he oversaw the war between Beltran Levi and uh, Los Zetas. And Los Zetas were, they kind of upped the level of violence in Mexico. They started the beheadings and stuff. Uh, they had been Mexican uh, military themselves, became security for the Gulf Cartel and then just became their own thing as the Gulf Cartel wound down and uh, you know La Barbie was able to battle them for years. Again Petty's was prone to violence himself though nowhere near the scale of La Barbie and this really was his undoing. One of his hitmen Clinton Lewis aka Goldie was charged uh, with kidnapping and uh, taking out a guy named Marcus Turner in September of 06. Turner had supposedly stolen some cocaine from Petty's and Petty's had him snatched up. And he was found on the side of a road, stripped naked, deceased in Olive Branch, Mississippi. Uh, that guy's brother or cousin, Martin Lewis, the other hitman known as M, uh, he got charged with killing a guy named Mario McNeil while McNeil was eating in a Memphis restaurant in March of 07. And the feds say McNeil was considered by Petty's a threat to his organization, I think in a competitive sense. So I don't know who this McNeil guy was, how big he was, but Petty's had him taken out. As for Craig Petty's himself, maybe he tried to make a deal, maybe he didn't, but by the time 2010 rolled around, the Barbie himself, his former connect to the Mexican cartel system, he was in custody, though it took about five years for them to get him to the U.S. And in 2018, a Barbie received 49 years in prison for cocaine distribution and money laundering. And interestingly enough, La Barbie definitely tried to cooperate for a long time. And he played himself kind of because he could have got a much better deal, but he drug it on so long his information got old, they didn't need him. As for Craig Petty's, the gavel fell back in 09 when he received nine concurrent life sentences, four of them for murders ordered from his Mexican hideout and he's currently in Terre Haute, Indiana, U.S. Penitentiary, one of the roughest federal prisons. 
Many secrets about the birth, life, and death of Craig Petty's criminal enterprise are still hidden in secret court files that are sealed and may be sealed forever, according to the U.S. federal prosecutor. I would imagine because in a case this large and so connected to the Mexican cartel system that there's a lot of secrets that would be very dangerous for people in politics in Mexico for sure, perhaps even in the United States to get out. So that was a little bit of the tale. Craig Petty's from South Memphis. And uh, next up, the story of Edgar LaBarbie Villarreal from Laredo, Texas. American Dope.